Okay, well, welcome back to the second video where we already have the data in SPSS and the next step is to start the analysis. So the first type of analysis that we are going to do is with descriptive statistics. Um, because as you remember from the lecture, descriptive statistics are very powerful in quantitative research. So we are going to dig a little bit on how to do the descriptive statistics. Then we move a little bit to the graphs and we, and we finish with a, a little discussion about normality because normality is also critical before going to the deeper analysis that we can do in here. Okay, so let's start with uh, uh, the descriptive statistics and a very strong or positive point from SPSS is that um, descriptive statistics are really simply calculated here and it's really easy to do it. You just need to click on analyze. We start like that. We start in here, analyze, and then you go to descriptive statistics and you go to descriptives. As you can see, before I start, uh, let me show you everything that we can do in here. You can do a lot of things like, for example, frequencies. That's something also interesting that we can dig in, in here with, with uh, some, some analysis about frequencies. Then we can also have, um, for example, uh, Explore is also an interesting uh, tool that we can use. I don't want to go into everything because I think I will uh, overload you with a lot of information. So I will just go to the most important ones and the ones that you will definitely use in your thesis. But remember, you can come back later. You can watch uh, other videos. You can ask me, you can ask other teachers or other students about anything else. There are so many things that I don't even use all of them. But so let's focus on the ones that we 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 will definitely use. So I will start with descriptives, OK? Descriptive statistics, descriptives. So here, uh, I, I think I already did it before the video. So <laughs> that's why it appearing here because when you start, when you open the, the, the SPSS file, it appears like this, only everything on the left side. And then you need to move the variables that you want to analyze on the right side. So you can do two things. You can put all the variables that are relevant. That is something that you can do on the right side, like from grade hours, everything. But I personally like to do it one by one. Maybe it takes more time, but I like it like that. But there is no problem. You can do it however you like. So you move grade to the right. And then you click on options to see what type of variables are you looking for. So of course, I think the mean is important. That's the average. If the sum is important, if adding up everything is important, you can click it or not. I think for the grade average, that's all, sorry, for the grade average is important, but Adding up all the grades, not that much. So I will say no. Then we have other statistic, uh, descriptive statistics that maybe you remember, like standard deviation, like variance range, maximum, minimum, and, uh, and the mean of the standard error. So usually you, you like all of them, or you, you want to see all of them, or you want to report all of them. Just remember that you understand them well. Also, if you don't remember what is this, go back to lecture six when we talk about uh, the descriptive statistics and then you know what's range, what's variance, what's standard deviation. And then you also have the, the distribution uh, statistics and that's really nice. If you have kurtosis and skewness, it will help, it will tell you um, the, if, if the distribution is normal or if it is a little bit to the right, to the left, up or down, we're going to, to give it a try. So let's, I will tick everything except some. Finally, display order means that if you have more variables, it will follow this order in the variable list that you included or alphabetic or depending on the mean or whatever. So you can give it a try, but since we are analyzing only one variable, it doesn't really matter this. So whatever, we'll just click. Yes, style and bootstrap, usually don't click bootstrap, it's not necessarily, but style, there are like some things that you can add in there, like maybe the settings that you can move, but again, my suggestion is don't move it. Here, don't click on set standardized values as standardized values as variables, that's another thing, it's not for what we are doing right now, and just click OK. So here we have the descriptive statistics for the grade, only the grade. So as you can see, we have total observations 20. We have a range of 42. So the range, the maximum minus the minimum 
is 42. So 94 minus 52 is 42. We have an average of 73.9, standard error of 2.7, again, 2.4. Remember, if you don't remember this, go to the lecture where we talk about it. Uh, then we have this the standard deviation statistic and the variance statistic. We don't really need this at this moment because we are focusing only on the descriptive statistics that we know and we are not doing that much yet with this. It depends on how deep you're going to do your analysis if you're going to do to use more variables, but I will focus only on the ones that are relevant at the moment. So don't pay attention that much to this and this is not that relevant right now. And then this, this is important. This, uh, this thing over here says that our, um, our distribution is a little bit to the right, distributed to the right because it's negative skewed. So remember negative skewed is to the right. It's kind of a weird thing, right? But to the right. <laughs> and if it is positive, it will be to the left. So it's a little bit to the right. It's not that much point minus 0.17, a little bit, but still something a bit significant. And then kurtosis, it is also negative 0.22. When it is negative, it means that it's a bit short, right? Like you remember the distri normal distribution? It, is, it means that it's a bit short. So this is descriptive statistics only for grade. And we can do this for all the, um, for all the variables that we have. Maybe you can do it at the same time or you can do it differently. Like maybe I want to now analyze uh, the, where is the hours of study per week? And I will, I want to do it individually. So I will take out this, then I click okay. So now I have the descriptive statistics for hours of study per week. So I can see that the range is 18. So the difference between 20 and two, blah, blah, blah. And also that the here is a little bit more normal. So it, that's good. It's not, it's not that bad. It's the, ideally, and, and, and that's kind of a tricky thing. We only have 20 observations, so not too many. And that complicates things. So because we only have 20, then it's difficult to get nice numbers. Like if we will have 20,000, we will probably have better results. But with 20, everything, a little change in one observation affects a lot. So it's kind of a tricky thing. So that's why it's not the ideal number. The ideal number is less than 0.1, either if it is negative or not. But minus 0.13 with 20, it's not that bad. But let's let's do something now. We know from the from the descriptive statistics that we are not perfectly normal. But what how can we also check if if our variable is normal or not. So what we can do is to do a graph. And also SPSS has a lot, a lot of possibilities to do graphs. Here, the first question that it asks is, make sure that all of your variables are correctly uh, stated as what type of variable they are. You remember we did this in the previous video that this is a nominal variable, this is scale variable, blah, blah. So you just click OK, because we are sure that we are fine. So here you can, this kind of the lab or it's called chart builder is like a lab of graphs. You can do like a lot, a lot of different, um, different types of, of, of charts. So let's start with the histogram because the histogram is very important to check if we have normal distribution. So I will produce a histogram for the grade just to check if the grade is normally distributed. So I will do it like that. There are certain things that you can check in here that you can fix if you want to, but I will just go, okay. And then I have the result. So this is the graph, the histogram of, my, of the grade. So um, it seems like the average is around here a little bit to the right, as I already predicted from this skew, negatively skewed. And it seems that it's a bit short, but here is a trick. I will, I will help you with this trick. Double click, the, double click on the graph and then you will, this, this thing will open. It, it, here you have like uh, some things that you can fix manually. I will close it. And here you can edit a lot of things. You can edit the colors, you can switch it upside down, whatever, add labels, whatever you want to do. But the, the one that I am looking for is this option over here. 
it says show distribution curve. I think it's very useful for, for me. I really like it. So I will add it. I just added it, right? It appears in here. So as you can see, this is my, uh, my graph with the distribution. If you, uh, if you close that window, it will update on the report uh, table that you have in here. So it appears in here. So as I already predicted, it's not perfectly normal because perfectly normal will fit exactly all of this. But it's not that bad. It's somehow normal distributed. I know that it's not perfect and the numbers don't help me, but I can assume some degree of normal distribution. So then I can proceed with some parametric test, which is what I am going to do next. In your thesis, most of the time you will face or you will use uh, normally distributed variables. Like I think also 99% of the time you will assume that you have normality. Only in the case that you have dummy variables when you have yes or not, then you will, especially if, if that is your dependent variable, you will have to do something that we call logistic regression, but that you will learn that later on, or it depends on what type of, of, of analysis you will do. But for what we are going to see in the lab and what will you probably do in your thesis is that you will end up uh, analyzing a variable that is normally distributed. So I am kind of, showing you first how to calculate descriptive statistics in SPSS, then how to use the graphs a little bit. Again, this experiment and do a lot of crazy things, just give it a try. And uh, we are finalizing with a quick analysis of normality. You should, uh, you should report that it's not uh, perfectly normal, but there is some degree of normality that you can use to assume and to use this variable as normally distributed, and then you can continue with parametric tests. So this is the end of this first video with the descriptive statistics. Then we move to a little bit more deeper analysis.